So now in this video I thought I'd put together some cables there. These are actually too small but uh, they'll be fine for what I'm going to use this for in upcoming videos. Um, we're going to connect the battery to this solar charge controller. And this is actually an MPPT solar charge controller and it can handle up to 20 amps. So um, you can plug in wire that's a lot larger than this. So first thing we're going to do is cut one of the wires. I think that will be plenty. And then we want to cut the black wire to about the same length right there. So now for the wire stripping, you can adjust this, but I find at the uh, shortest setting, it's still usually uh, more removed insulation than I want. So I'm gonna come back a little bit right there. Don't wanna go back too far. Um, and then we'll do uh, this one right here, go back a bit right there. I think we're still good. And then the other side, so. This tool is uh, really nice, but there's a lot of tools that do the same thing. They may just uh, be set up a little bit uh, differently right there. It can cut with the blade down here and then automatically strip right there. You don't need to really adjust for the wire size. It does that automatically other than how much insulation you want to remove sometimes. So now I'm gonna use these uh, blue spade connectors because they're uh, rated for 16 to 14 American wire gauge according to this kit. Um, but it says that the red ones are uh, 22 to 16 American wire gauge. So you could probably use red as well, but I'm going to uh, use blue for the female. The uh, battery has the male spade connector. So obviously we don't wanna use that one. So now I pre-bent this wire a little bit and uh, we'll show you why later on. I'm just gonna give it a slight twist in a certain direction there um, just to kind of hold the strands together a little bit you don't really want to twist it to bind them up so here's the plan the connector is going to go onto there so this is the top right there i removed the uh, protective cover and uh, the wire will be in there and it's going to make its way towards the center as is that one there because the two spots on the charge controller are close together we're going to try to center that with the battery so now this is the way we want it. We have to put it in the tool though, upside down like that. That's gonna be a little tricky. So it's gonna go in this middle spot. It's pretty easy to identify um, right there. And you just slide it through until uh, the plastic is towards the edge. So you put it in upside down and uh, you squeeze it, it's ratcheting, uh, which means it clicks and locks in place as you close it. And we got it there. So make sure the wire is the right way that we want. And I'm gonna slide it back till it's just barely sticking out and then squeeze down as hard as I can. Right there, had to get a better grip. And we are crimped. One sign of a good crimp is the two dots uh, right there. The metal is sticking out from the wire a little bit and I'm tugging on this uh, pretty hard and it's not sliding out, which is good. And now I pre-bent the black wire. It's a little bit longer, so we'll just offset the uh, solar charge controller a little bit. So I already put it in there. Remember, uh, we wanna put it upside down there, and then I will uh, spin the wire here. And uh, for the red one, we were off that direction, so now we're gonna go uh, this direction with the uh, black one. And the reason why you spin it is to help uh, avoid the stray strand that you saw there, so. Didn't uh, quite work out uh, perfectly, I think, because I keep bumping it. Um, so in any case, let's keep those strands together. And now hopefully we can just insert it straight in without having to twist it. There we go. And I have some more uh, metal, some more exposed. I'll just slide it back. Um, but there we go. Should be able to ratchet this with uh, one hand if you have a good grip, but I'm at an odd angle. So now we're gonna add uh, ferrule connectors to uh, both of them. So it looks round to begin with, but when you crimp it, it will look uh, different depending on what kind of crimper you got. So we're using 16 American wire gauge. We want uh, these black ones there. I do have a uh, 12 gauge wire, which would be these gray ones, which I would use for a more serious project. So it looks like uh, copper, but it's actually copper cladding. If the light hits it right, you'll see there's a silvery uh, thing there. It's aluminum with a little layer of copper on top of it. So now I already twisted up the wires there together uh, pretty well and uh, you can squeeze this a little bit but it went on uh, pretty good. So if I didn't uh, shorten the wires a little bit this would be uh, sticking out and like uh, you saw with that uh, other wire that I showed you. So um, you can kind of, this is square shape, uh, if you know how to adjust it just right to get the square to be perfectly shaped. Um, but I'm not sure exactly how to do that. But in any case, we just squeeze them together. Now it's a square shape and you can see all these little dimples that grab onto the wire. 
And now we got the other one. So what I was talking about, like the angle, so that if we have this like this, it would be flat on top. I don't know how to line it up perfectly like that. Maybe if I did a bunch of these, I could. Um, so we'll just uh, hope that's good enough, which it should be. We can uh, twist this a little bit as needed. That won't be a problem. So now we got uh, the solar charge controller right here. And by the way, it has a big heat sink in the back. I'm pretty sure they're made to uh, be used upright like this, not laying down, but we're gonna stay with low power in these demonstrations. Just uh, easy to keep the uh, camera filming them. So we got these slots uh, down here. So uh, we move here. They actually uh, go up when you uh, tighten it. And uh, so you put the wire on top there. You can see those are uh, down low. If I go like that up there, now they flipped up right there. So when you tighten them, they go up. That's where they're stronger. Uh, when they're down, they are looser. And uh, it's pretty easy to uh, just screw them right there. Should have had a bigger screwdriver, but this one worked uh, just fine. So um, we're going to uh, lower this one and then put in the uh, black wire ferrule. So yeah, we got uh, plenty of room there, even though I don't think it's showing up uh, very good. And so we want to uh, make this there we go, so it's off to the right. And then the red one will go next to it, off to the left. It's that easy to insert them. And uh, then just uh, clockwise until it uh, tightens. Pretty straightforward, but I'll, I'll show it there. And it uh, feels like it's pretty tight. I could uh, tighten it down more, but I don't want to damage anything. Nope, I did have to tighten it more, right there. So that was a good test of that. There we go. And now we're going to attach them to the battery. So the wires are a bit uh, different length, makes things a little bit awkward. Let's do the red one first. It looks like it's less forgiving for moving around because it's shorter. And uh, this is the first time I put this female spade connector on there. Um, so they tend to not go on easy the first time, but after a time or two, usually you gotta like wiggle it. There we go, now it's on. Um, Next time it'll probably be uh, fairly easy. And we're probably gonna see a spark right here when I attach this right now. And uh, I don't think uh, we did, but I wasn't up close, maybe we did. And uh, that click uh, is actually uh, came apart. I think we might've welded it a little bit. Um, but in case, there you go. Uh, we got it on and we are plugged in. So that uh, turns it on. And uh, usually with these things, you want to uh, put the uh, battery on before the uh, solar. Sometimes these will be destroyed uh, by solar. I've uh, destroyed other things putting the power on before the battery and I saw videos of other people that uh, one guy in particular destroyed something like this. Now when I got this it was actually uh, right there and uh, we want it on lithium so I can just press the button right there and now we are on uh, lithium and that uh, is displayed. It's easier to see in person than uh, what you see there, maybe if I brighten the lamp. But yeah, it's showing you the uh, battery voltage right there. And um, so it looks like, because I haven't done any more than what you see here, and I just touched wires to uh, stuff, there you go. Um, but uh, what we should get, if that's at uh, 13 volts, if we put 26 volts to the power there, we're just gonna keep the math easy. Then if uh, this is, uh, well, if we're given one amp at 26 volts, then we should have two amps at uh, 13 volts. That's what MPPT does. It uh, converts the power. So you got that higher voltage coming in than what the battery needs. So what it does is take some of that extra voltage and turn it into extra current. So now we're gonna manually charge this. I uh, goofed up on the last uh, couple of scenes. And uh, so um, we got a little more charge in the battery. The voltage went up, but it looks like it's gonna trickle down uh, relatively quickly back to probably 13.2 volts. So I got this set to 2.5 volts there, two amp uh, maximum. So you can see the voltage there. What might be uh, more interesting is the uh, current that we got. So it's gonna take a little while. I'm just going to press these directly to that and uh, not hit that button. That uh, really screwed things up last time I was uh, shooting. So you can see it looks like uh, we got a little bit of current for it to sense that it's got power. Now it's ramping up, as you can see there. And um, so it's gonna get up to uh, two amps. There we go. When it went constant current, that was uh, two amps. So to see what the uh, voltage is, I uh, have to press that again. And nope, that's amps. Pressing the wrong thing. There we go, that's what I gotta press. So 
we are getting about 25 volts there. So there you can see it is uh, converting it. Let's see if I can adjust this and uh, zoom in. And uh, so there you can see we have uh, about 25 volts coming in and the current uh, kind of wavering there. But um, there you can see we got about two amps of current. I think it wavered because I moved a little bit. And uh, it's more current being pumped into the battery. That's the main thing. So it's conserving power since uh, the power supply has a higher voltage. Um, if you just uh, connect it to the battery directly, it will put uh, that two amps of current into the battery and uh, usually these chargers will stop it once it gets to a high enough uh, voltage. But here it's converting that um, extra voltage into more current and it looks like uh, it's not uh, always constant. Okay, it might uh, just stop because the battery is at a high enough voltage right there. Um, a bigger battery, the voltage change wouldn't be as drastic. And I'm not sure if I can adjust that. I'll have to look into that because I don't like that it stopped right there. Should have went up to 14.2 volts. But uh, in any case, um, there's all kinds of videos where people go into more detail about this charging process. I am just doing this kind of as a bonus video. So I thought I was going to end it there, but I thought of uh, something else. So I'm going to set this down to 0.5 amps as the maximum uh, current. So we got like a solar panel that we're simulating and uh, not much light. It's not getting much uh, power generation from a uh, solar panel. So um, this is going to take time to uh, register again. And uh, so there you can see that uh, we got uh, hitting the wrong button there. There we go. Um, so you can see the voltage is lower while it's adjusting things. Um, but uh, we got 0.4 amps according to that from this uh, unit here. And this actually says 0.5. So this probably isn't as accurate as what that is showing. But in any case, there you can see now the current going into the battery is about um, almost like twice as much as uh, that one right there, which we would expect because we have a higher voltage. Um, and uh, looks like it's kind of adjusting things so it's not uh, steady bouncing around a little bit but the main thing is we got more power coming in even when the panel is like lower so this makes sure that uh, as long as the solar panel is getting I don't know how low we could go but uh, as long as it's getting enough uh, power you know some power um, yeah looks like even that low 0.3 amps right there it's still able to uh, charge the battery and give the battery more current than uh, what the uh, panel provides. It's converting that voltage to current. So, in any case, this was really long. I thought it would just be a short demonstration video, but uh, everybody that stuck around this long, thanks for sticking around this long. Uh, check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next one.